Welcome to Comic and Screen. I am Sam Martin with Jason Book, and we are going to be talking about Batman issue 21, which is part one of The Button, which is an event with The Flash and Batman. It's going to be happening for the next few weeks, and it is a continuation of the DC Rebirth special that we got last year, where we saw the Watchmen button, smiley face button, in the Batcave. So now it looks like we're going to be getting some answers about what might be going on there between the Watchmen characters and the DC Rebirth universe. But let's first of all just get into this first issue. It's written by Tom King. We've got pencils uh, by Jason Fabok, an artist that we both really like. Um, so Jason, what did you make of this kind of kickoff to the Button storyline? It was really solid. I enjoyed it. I mean, essentially a lot of it was uh, Batman fighting, you know, reverse flash and how that would play, pay off. But it was done super well, mixing the colors with the uh, Watchmen button, uh, really building it up. It almost felt like the beginning of one of those crisis type events in DC, and that's a high praise to me. So, uh, as usual, enjoyed the artwork a lot. Really has that Jim Lee kind of vibe to it, but his own style. And it really builds into something where at the end I was like, oh, this is pretty crazy. What's going on? So, I'm interested to see what happens next for sure. Yeah, I thought it was cool how uh, Tom King could build so much anticipation and make it feel like a big story is kicking off when it basically is in one setting. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's pretty much in, in the Batcave and the reverse, reverse Flash appears there, yep. and that's where the fight happens. So they're not like epically going all over Gotham City or to different, you know, big uh, settings outside. It's right there in the cave, but it felt big just in terms of storytelling and raising questions about these characters um, like Flashpoint uh, Paradox kind of stuff mm -hmm. coming back around, um, Thomas Wayne showing up like briefly. Yeah. So I, th I think it did a good job of having a fight scene that had a beginning, middle, and end uh, with Reverse Flash, which is really nice to have in a comic issue, but also raise these questions that just make us want to see the next issue. So, I mean, to me, a really, really effective start to the story. Yeah, totally. Um, the only thing to me going forward, only concern is you're starting off really strong with this artwork by... Jason Fabok, and as we've seen in other kind of crossover events, we're moving to The Flash for the next issue um, with art, I believe, by Howard Porter or something, but not that he's, you know, no slouch art-wise, but I we have talked before before with crossovers with consistency artwork-wise, so I just mm -hmm. hope they can kind of keep that, um, you know, high level going into the next part of it, because I really uh, think I'm going to keep following this one. Yeah. I think the good thing is, though, if it is those two artists, I think you're right. Um, their styles match together pretty well. Cool. So I think it should go pretty good from one to the other. Right on. And one thing in terms of passing the baton, I think this one did a really great job because uh, when there's these crossovers, especially if it's like a two book crossover, so here we got Batman, two issues, and The Flash, two issues, making a four part story. Um, a lot of times it's just a four part story and then it just goes across the books. But this one, it was a Batman story that was in the Batman issue. And then, right at the end of this issue, it perfectly passes it off to The Flash. And now we want to see what The Flash is going to do next. And then he'll have a Flash issue. So I think it is, you know, it looks like it's going to be one cohesive story that's going to answer these questions about the button. But they're passing it between the books in a way that I really appreciate rather than just slapping the story onto the books. Yeah, totally. I think they did a good job with that as well. Um, I had a question for you. What did you think, first of all, of the violence in this issue because I found when I was reading it, I don't think that it was gratuitous, but it was really quite bloody for the start of a book like this. I understand mm -hmm. they were kind of playing off the speed of this character being able to really give it to Batman. And, uh, you know, what you kind of th what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I definitely noticed it, um, especially because Tom King had just done I Am Bane, right. which also the last issue of that, got very bloody and Batman was getting also pummeled pretty good yeah. in that one. Um, so for me, that just coming off of that and now having him getting pummeled uh, pretty good again, um, it definitely does start to hit you as a reader and see that stuff. Um, but to me, it'll just matter where it goes next. Like if right. in the next issue, Batman feels fine and then he's back at it, it'll kind of be like, wait a minute, how are you recovered so quickly? You were yeah. getting hit pretty hard for a full minute by reverse flash. Totally. Um, so hopefully they somehow build it into the story next where he does still have those wounds and something and he has to be a wounded Batman through this arc, I think it would have to be. Yeah, I'm with you on that because I'm not a continuity nerd at all, but if you're seeing this happen back to back and you're an avid reader of the Batman book, maybe after this crossover is done, do a little one-off issue where Batman's really kind of looking at things and having to rest up and maybe have a an issue yeah. focusing on a supporting character or something. Right. 
Yeah, so we'll see. I'll I'll reserve judgment on that. But yeah, it definitely. I mean, it starts in your face where mm-hmm. it's like, wow, he's he's getting hit pretty hard. He does though. I mean, Batman has a couple uh, good Batman moves. I thought totally. so. A little little spoiler here, but I thought that was really good writing and the art worked well um, with him kind of stabbing Reverse Flash in the foot. I thought that was a clever way and a plausible way that Batman could actually try to land some hits against Reverse Flash. Yeah, it was very cool. It's one of the things. When we were talking about Batman versus Superman, you didn't want to necessarily see because you're always like, Batman always finds a way to get out of everything, and I don't want him to do that with Superman. But it's one of those things mm-hmm. when you're writing the character, there always seems to find something new to do with them, and uh, yep. it's almost like some sort of, you know, the, the, the will of a guy with no superpowers over someone with powers is kind of a cool thing to always see. Yeah. And I like it too, when you have a, a fight in a comic book, I really appreciate the fights that have something memorable about them, yes. where even a year down the road, you can remember this fight. Right. And I feel like that's how this one was. I'm like, oh, this is a memorable fight, you know? Totally. Um, yeah, where other comic books, you know, it'll be like, oh, they fight, it was cool, but by next week, I've already kind of forgotten what the fight was, other than that there was a fight. Exactly, yeah. Um, what did you think about the nine-panel grid? Uh, Tom King has used that before uh, in some of his other books um, and giving kind of this sense of the pacing with the grid and then kind of building up to a splash page that kind of you know covers the whole grid. Well, I really like that because obviously if you're going to do something which a lot of people think is kind of sacrilegious to, to mix Watchmen into the DC Universe proper, mm-hmm. then at least do it this way and have those kind of homages to the original book, the way that book was, um, yeah. you know, set up. And also, as I previously mentioned, the color, how they're mixing the color of the yellow with the blood, it really worked well. Yeah. If they can yep. keep this kind of thing up in the whole crossover and have it pay off, I think it's, they're, they're really doing the right thing here. Yeah. And I liked, they not only had the nine panel grid, like you said, uh, as an homage, but they also had the ticking countdown. Ah, I thought that was yeah. a really cool way. Like, it was not only the nine-panel grid, but it was overlaying it with a countdown, and I really got a good sense of pacing and kind of momentum forward because of that, I think. It was really cool structure. Yeah, totally. And then when you do open to some of the splash pages, I think they're really effective because that, you know, you've gotten into this nine panel groove and you're like, wow, I'm going, I'm going, I get this kind of pace into it. And then when I turn and there's the bigger splash page, I feel like it has more effect than other other ones where the splash page just kind of like comes out of a mixed kind of layout. Yeah, I read this one digitally, but I wouldn't mind actually uh, picking it up the, the hard copy just to kind of take a look at the artwork that way. I think it would be pretty good. Right. Um, so cool. And I look to see if they, you know, are going to use that grid structure throughout the whole thing. I'm guessing that Williamson and King talked about that quite a bit. And so we might see some different creative uses of the nine panel uh, layout in mm-hmm. the other issues as well. I think uh, it, we were talking before too about them going from one to the other, kind of passing the torch. If they have it kind of flash centric for the next one, then back to Batman and maybe at the last one, they kind of come together. That could work really well for this crossover, I think. Yeah. So uh, we got the button. Um, there was also the hockey game that they uh, ah, yeah. mixed in here. As a Canadian, did you appreciate the hockey connection? It's actually funny you mentioned that. I forgot to talk about <laughs> that um, because the writing was actually spot on. Either Scott Snyder or sorry, Tom King is a uh, a big NHL fan, or he just happened to really watch a game from start to finish and really listen to the commentating because that's exactly mm-hmm. how it sounds. Uh, yeah. The terminology was perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, having the names of the teams, obviously, uh, you know, it's Gotham and Metropolis. That's how they've got to do yeah. it. But other than that, it really felt authentic, and I appreciated mm-hmm. that. Yeah, and how the on- the announcer is sort of like, oh, fight's coming. But then as the fight gets more brutal, the announcer's sort of like, oh, no, wait a minute. we need This needs to stop. Yeah, exactly. I thought you could really feel the announcer, you know, thinking it's just part of hockey at first. But then the announcer gets more and more concerned as it's going on. Cool. Yeah, and that's cool how that works to go with the scene of them really pummeling each other because it made it almost more brutal because you kind of anticipate it happening, right? Yeah. And the juxtaposition with the hockey fight, to me, the hockey fight is a very realistic thing. So I have realistic images of violence to connect that with. That's right. And and now I connect that right over to Batman and Reverse Flash, where without the hockey fight, I would have just probably thought of the Batman Reverse Flash fight as very fictional. Yes. Um, but this gave it a tinge of much more realism, which made it more impactful. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, in terms of the button and the Watchmen stuff, uh, Thomas Wayne showing up the letter. I mean, I, I really like the connection. We're not only getting Watchmen stuff, but we're also getting Flashpoint stuff, which I thought was a really good story from Jeff Johns. Mm-hmm. And that letter is a really emotional letter. So bringing that back in. 
Um, but I kind of don't want to speculate too much about this stuff. I want to just enjoy the story, and we're going to get the next issue in just a few days, yeah. and then we're going to get the next issue a week later. So I want to kind of ride it out rather than trying to rack my brain in predicting things. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, I mean, maybe mm-hmm. just, you know, off the top of my head, I'm like, well, maybe Thomas Wayne is somehow connected to the Watchmen universe or something interesting like that. We'll see. But I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that they're doing the books coming out this quick after you don't have to wait long. This is what we always talked about. If you're going to do a crossover, do it on time, keep the quality up hopefully and we'll be happy. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, we might find some Watchmen stuff that was the cause of Flashpoint or something or, you know, yeah. in the mix of it. Never I don't know, know, but I'm just, I just waiting to see what the answers are. And I also want to go back and re reread the DC rebirth special. Um, yeah. I think that'll is obviously connecting to this one nicely too. So Cool. Well, it looks like we enjoyed it. I'm definitely looking forward to see what Flash is going to do next. Um, him coming a little bit too late in this issue. Um, so we'll see where he takes it. Yeah, sounds good. I'm looking forward to it.